And welcome to the Klaus and Q Show here on ON TV. I'm Jason Klaus being joined by my tag team partner, as it were, Quad L. Edwards. And it's going to be a big week here, right? Oh, absolutely, man. I'm looking forward to it. We have a very special guest here on the show here tonight, uh, a, a personal friend of both Q and I's and somebody that we thought would bring a very unique uh, perspective to the topic at hand. And it's kind of a loaded topic. Would, would you agree with that? Oh, I mean, absolutely. It's, it's as personal as it gets. And we are very pleased and honored uh, uh, to welcome Brian Balft to the show. Brian, we appreciate you coming on. The, I know the nerves may be a little bit, um, you know, on high alert, as it were. But <coughs> essentially, it's just like we're at work. Yep, we, right. We, we all work at the same place. and. Um, you know, every day there's always a little bit of shenanigans going on. Yeah. But um, be that as it may, we're bringing that dynamic here to ON TV tonight, and I cannot be more excited. Brian, um, we wanted you on here because um, we're talking about something that I feel like you could bring a lot to the table, and that is utilizing our talents to achieve our dreams. And when I kind of threw this idea out on the table, you know, Q was real quick to, to pick up on it because make absolutely no mistake about it, everybody has something that they bring to the, to the table that nobody else does. Would, would you agree with that, Q? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And this guy, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got to stop building me up like that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here is, I mean, you know, the talent that he has, you know, just in – you know, uh, within him, you know, everything that he does and everything that he's capable of doing. I think he's the perfect candidate to have on this show to really uh, give people that enlightenment that they need to really go after their dreams and goals and how to accomplish the things that, that you know, that might be contrary enough in your mind. So well, many talents, man. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, when you talk about talents, <coughs> it could be a number of different things. It, it could be something... Mentally, it could be something physically, you know, because mm -hmm. I know people who are whizzes at math, and I'm right, at like right. a grade five level, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. like my son can, you know, do all the carry this and plus that, and I mean, but now <laughs> nowadays, uh, you know, your basic math problem is, you know, that right, level, right? right. Your common core. Yeah. What? Uh, yeah. Um, but that's what we want to want to talk about here tonight on the show. We are talking about how we can utilize our talents. And I feel like that the first thing that we really need to do when we start embarking on a, a personal goal or a dream or something of this nature could be you're looking to, to change your careers. You're looking to do something else, something to fill a void. And a lot of times that's where we stumble across our our talents, whether we mean to or not, right? right? Right. Because a lot of times people downplay those. Yeah. And I've always maintained that if you bring something to the to the table that nobody else does, or not a lot of people do, that gives you a boost into your your first step towards your goal. Now Brian here is a very accomplished artist. Like I I was blown <laughs> away by his 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 artwork like he does amazing things and he's now taken that a step further especially where we work and something that i have a great appreciation in because he's taken that that raw talent refined it and has now started embarking in merchandising and you know me as well as, as anybody i am a huge you know pr proprietor of merchandising, but Brian, when when did you realize? I would imagine it was probably at an early age that you had some sort of talent for 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 drawing and things of this nature. Um, it was more honestly, I was like nine, and it was more of a passion for the comic strip Garfield. Okay, because I'm like a year younger than what Garfield's age was, mm -hmm. because I think it was '78. Jim Davis started drawing him. So I remember that there was a TV show, and for the Garfield's 10th birthday, he was on the show and he showed how to draw Garfield. I recorded it on the VHS off the TV, played it back, watched it repeatedly, and then I sat there and did that. And like I remember taking them to school, and people were like, can I have one of those? I'll give you five cents for it. So now I'm mass marketing Garfield <laughs> drawings. <clears throat> and like viewer, pushing really? them off right. and like coming home with a handful of change. I'm like, look what I made. Right. And I, I think it was that positive affirmation to like, oh, 
you did really good at this. I'm like, oh, maybe this is something I have a talent or a skill at. And then it's thousands upon thousands of hours of that after that. It was like <clears throat> asking for a drafting table and then spending probably two, three hours every day just sitting at there at that table and just drawing. Like I get from my stepson who is also very creative and he's like, how can you, how do you draw like that? I'm like, you can too. It's just hours and hours of work. Sure. Now, it, it, it's cool because you realized at an early age and you, you embraced it, you acknowledged it. There are so many people that I know on a personal level, and Q, I, you, you, you may too, you know, people have a talent, they get told that they have a talent, mm -hmm. but then they downplay it because it's like, oh no, it's not that big of a deal, right? Yeah. You know people yeah. like this? Oh, absolutely. And uh, I believe that a lot of people actually downplay a lot of their talents because they're afraid to show it to the world. They're mm -hmm. afraid that, you know, the perception that other people are gonna have on what they're talented at, you know? You, you, he, he was an artist and he took it out to his, you know, his, his friends and actually started merchandising. And, but if he would have had that fear of what people was gonna think about, you know, his, his, his drawings or people would be like, oh man, I, you should have moved this part over here or you should have moved this or edited this and that. And that can really uh, drive people away from what they're good at. And right. Really, that talent that you have is really who you are. So that's taking a piece of who you are away just by how other people are looking at it, you know? Yeah, um, you know, especially around, because when, when I was younger, I was always, you know, I was into art and creating things from a very early age. Of course, mine was always centered around wrestling. Like, you know, yeah. I, that's how I met my, my childhood best friend. I was, I, I was, you know, I had a paper, a, a piece of paper, and I was drawing Hulk Hogan, and he was sitting next to me. He's like, oh, you're a wrestling fan? 30 plus <laughs> years later, we're still friends. You, right. you know what I'm saying? Um, but so many people, like 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 you just said, so, so much of that is because everybody's a critic, and if mm -hmm. and if their feelings are hurt, and they start to like, oh well, maybe I'm not that good, or maybe this isn't this, or this isn't that, they start putting those seeds of doubt, and especially when when you're younger, and Brian would be the the exception here because if he. A lot of kids nowadays, especially nowadays. I, maybe, I was going to say, I think it's worse nowadays. Yeah, oh, yeah it, it maybe is. not so much like when we were growing up, but especially in the here and now because everybody has to voice their opinion. Right. And it's always, you know, okay, that's great, but here's what's not great about it. Well, why are we focusing on that? Right, why can't right. we not just embrace what's happening? You know, are you able to do that? Chances are <laughs> probably not. But that's jealousy, right? Mm -hmm. Because they see something in somebody that, oh, th this could take them somewhere, but I want to be where they want to be. Right, right. Now, I've always maintained there's there's two sides to every coin here. And Brian, we'll, we'll ask you this part first. How many people do you know, and I'm sure there might be a couple of them, that have a talent, they have been told they have a talent, they not only acknowledge it, but it becomes, it goes right to their head. Like now all of a sudden they are the oh, end all yeah. be all to the point to where you're like, okay, that's great and everything, but I am not invested in anything you're doing just based mm -hmm. solely on your fundamental pr presentation. Do you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, like obviously that? there's definitely a few and it's hard to be critical because just like we just said, you don't want to be critical about somebody else's passion. Right. So maybe they do have that, that inflated ego and they're not quite there yet, but it's, you still almost want to nudge them in the right direction. Like the last thing you want to do is shatter someone's dream. Sure. Right, right. Like it's hard to say, I have a passion in this and this is what I want to do because you know right away, as soon as that word comes out of your mouth, if somebody goes, really? Right. You think you're funny? Right. You, you think you're a good writer? And you're like, all of a sudden you're back in your head like, oh, maybe I'm not. And then that just shuts down that process. Right, And right. if you can't, that first thing is telling somebody. Like, there's things I still want to do myself, and if I don't say them out loud, because I know as soon as I say them out loud, I'm putting pressure on myself. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a very <laughs> good point that you just brought up. A yeah. lot of that is internal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, <laughs> I'm telling you. 
I, I got to use myself as an example. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that, you know, I want to do. And when you, when you have a passion in something, and, it, and, me and me and Brian, we actually talked about, you know, one of my passions. And the first thing he did was help me try to market <laughs> that passion. And uh, it's, it, it's almost like you got to deal with yourself before you start dealing with the people that's out there. Because uh, if you're not focused and you start losing focus on, you know, what you got on the inside, then these people will be able to just manipulate you right out of your goals and out of your dreams. And, and you're, you're not headstrong. You're not, you're not, your heart's not in it anymore because, you know. And if you don't know who you are, then that leads to a whole bunch of other stuff. You know? I, I mean, that's... <laughs> You've heard me say, you know, you've, you've, if anybody has listened to the podcast or anything like that, th that's a fundamental <clears throat> of life. You right. know what I mean? And yep. I feel like in this day and age, I say it almost every week, at least once or twice, we have got to get back to the fundamentals of life. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's solely because we've got one life to live. There, you know, what, what we do with it is totally up to us for, for the majority. Now, that's not to say that there's not going to be challenges and obstacles and there will be people that try to derail you from where you want to go for what you want to be. That's why it's so important that when you do have some sort of talent, you really <clears throat> embrace that. I mean, because a lot of criticism, foul criticism, it, you know, that's spawned from, from somebody who wants to be in your position because right, you're right. getting the attention that they want. You have the talent to pull this off, whereas mm -hmm. that is telling them what they don't have, right? right and that's not right. to say that they're not talented in some <clears throat> way, shape, or form. It's just not in this realm. Brian is a tremendous artist, but, but can he hang drywall? You know, I, you know. I hung drywall for years. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Before I went to GM. It was, <coughs> it was the first thing that, that came to mind. You know. um, but, you know, with you, you know, because of the success, even on, in the grand scheme of things, a lower level of, I mean, you're not quitting your job now to focus on your art or anything like that. I mean, ultimately, I would imagine in an ideal situation, in a perfect world, you would be making your living by, by doing something that you're passionate about. I mm -hmm. feel like that's what everybody's goal is. Right. You right. know, because it goes back to that saying, Q, you know, if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life, right? Right, right, right. So I just, you know, aside from, you know, Brian's success and his art has carried him into merchandising. He's made a line of shirts that, you know, he designed and has had printed and there's people all over the plant that are wearing these things now. And that's got to be some sort of validation for you, right? Like, oh, yeah. like that tells you, you did something cool, it resonated with people, and like you, you can't walk into the plant now without seeing at least one person wearing your yeah, shirt, right. right? Yeah. Even and just I, from his team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <clears throat> but like I told you, it was like, like, it wasn't until I walked into work and seen that first person wearing my shirts. I'm like, I went to you because I know you know it because right. of all the merchandising you do. And it's like, wow, that feeling that you get when you look and you see someone wearing something that you made, it's a feeling that's hard to describe. You're like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it truly is. But I would imagine because you have experienced that kind of... For, for you, and, and this is very important, I feel like, because th this tells me that your motivation is in the right place. It's not just a monetary gain, although, you know, if you're going to go into that kind of thing, merchandising, any kind of, of marketing or whatever, you want to mm -hmm. make money to make it worthwhile. You obviously, you if this is something that you can expand on to make this your living then man you're on the right path you have got square one done but when you see that kind of success and it conjures the feelings on the inside not just because okay this guy spent x amount of money on this t-shirt or or whatever mm -hmm. but the feeling of satisfaction and accomplishment right yep so that's going to inspire you to you know, kind of step your game up yeah, to, to for level. for the next design or, you know, okay, we did t-shirts, now we're going to do hoodies, we're going to do hats, and the next thing you know, you have a whole merchandise line. <laughs> you can open up your own store if you wanted right. to, right? 
but that also when people have that kind of success, it motivates them to expand upon what else they might be having happening, what else they're good at. For you, it's writing. Yep. You know, and that, again, I, it's something I'm very interested in because for the longest time I wrote blogs, I've, I've written children's books, they're, they're not published, but they're written, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. That reminds me of my friend Jordan, who we had on here a couple of years ago, a local art, um, uh, author, started with one book, he's now got like five or six. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Q, how important is it to your psyche that when you achieve that kind of success initially, and you have the purest of intentions with, you know, you don't mm -hmm. want to rip people off and things of this right. nature, obviously, but if as long as you are, you, it's that feeling on the inside to, to me that means more than any amount of money in the bank, right? Oh, or, yeah. or am I just off my rock? Oh, here? no, you, you right on point right there. Um, really, it's, it's, the money is not the first thing you're thinking about. Like if you're passionate, passionate at something, you, you don't mind doing it for free. But uh, eventually, you know, the, you know that the money, you know, all that stuff is coming. But the first thing you got to do is you got to make yourself valuable. So, and that's what he, pretty much he did. He made himself valuable in the t-shirt game. He made himself valuable in merchandising. And now you're getting the money coming to you. The money is actually coming to you. Instead of you chasing the money, the money's coming to you because you made yourself valuable in that area. So that's very important. When you find your talents, you have your talents, you got to make yourself valuable in that area because that's something that nobody can take away from you. You make an excellent point here. Um, I look at it, I, I talk about investing in your own brand, yep. right? And you, you don't have to have like a corporate umbrella. You don't have to have anything like that. <clears throat> you just have to have you. Mm -hmm. You know, like with Brian, you know, you... You've got people coming up to you. Where do I get these shirts? Yep. Where do I so get there? this? It's not like you're you're dumping a bunch of money on billboards and things of this right. nature. The people that are wearing your merchandise are your <laughs> billboards. So um, yeah, it's this guy, right? Well, I mean, for sure. <laughs> and you know, like the the other the other night, what was it? Last night, like five or six people in our huh. area alone had the you know because you've done a couple different yep. you know shirts now. I'll have the the newest one. <laughs> yep. And that is like I saw that, and like it reminded me of a time like like our friend Derek Vert. Like yep. he he was the one that really, you know, for me from the way I saw it, he he came up with a design was very popular in 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 the old trim shop, and that kind of you know I was like wow that's really cool and I started getting into screen printing for the wrestling company I'm like well maybe I can make a couple work re you know re related shirts or whatever and like there was a time where I would walk in and there would be four or five people wearing s something that I printed and I was like yep. wow that's that's really awesome I still see four or five people wearing your shirt every yeah. once so, yeah I mean oh, yeah. like like well last night there there was a couple of them and that feeling of, of accomplishment, but I, I also realize that my level of success is going to really count on how I present myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if I present myself as somebody that's holier than now and I'm better than you because you're buying things that I made, you couldn't do this. I'm the only one that was able to do this. Well, you know, I feel like when you when you invest in your own brand. How you present yourself to the public is another factor into mm -hmm. the level of success. Would you agree? I agree. I agree. That is really that time that you're investing because uh, those dreams that you have, no amount of money is going to be able to pay for it. Right. You need to exceed the amount that you have in your pocket and your bank account. Your bank account is not going to fund your dreams. That time that you put into it, that's, that's the fun right there. It's it's amazing to me how people misconstrue that. Right, right. They look at it as the polar opposite. Right. It's not about the time. Mm -hmm. Like they, the, a lot of people. That's why they, a lot of people don't start. That's it. <laughs> that's exactly it. And not only that, but it's that fear of failure. Yep. It's the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. There's going to be trial and error, and, and I don't care what aspect of life that that you're talking about. Because Brian, when when you started, like you and I. 
you know, we have a very unique friendship. Like, we have a lot of the same things in common. Definitely. Like, there's things that you and same I... Same age, even. Yeah. Like, basically. <laughs> I mean, there are, there are things that you and I talk about that I can't talk to anybody else about because they just don't have, <clears throat> not the mindset, but the experiences. They don't, you know, they don't know where we're coming from. Yeah. Um, so, it's, 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 it's so important, I feel like, that... You know, you got to go through the trial and error, the time invested, mm -hmm. as, as you were talking. When you were designing your 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 first logo, like I don't know how many times you you brought you you brought your iPad to me, and like what what do you think yeah. about this? Well, yep. what's that look like on here, or what's this look like on this color? How long did it take you to work on your first you know logo before it actually? I was sitting there thinking that when you were talking to right before that, I was like, how many different designs was there before we I settled on that one to do as the first one? And it was basically like I had nine different designs drawn up mm -hmm. that I did, and it was just kind of like, all right, like what's my feedback am I getting from each one of these? And then mm -hmm. the final one was. was because it's kind of like loose, it's based off of the machine shop logo. Right, which and is it huge was, in the Flynn area. I happened to be there for the Fozzie show okay. with my buddy, and I looked up at that logo, and I'm like, oh, I could make that into like a shop <laughs> logo. Mm -hmm. I could do that. And I'm like, I know the tweaks. I could change that to that and that to that. And I'm like, all right. So then I did that one, and that one probably, I, I got the most feedback where everyone was like, wow, that one's really cool. Yeah, that was so, a hot one. And then it, it kind of surprised me, because some of the ones that are my favorite, Aren't everyone else's? And they're like, you should do this one next. I'm like, that one, huh? Like, All right. I'm like, you don't want the, like this one? Right. No? Like, no. All right. But, and I got to follow what people want because they're the ones buying. They're yeah. the ones buying it. Right. Stick with the demand. I, I look. I've done the same thing when when I've done you know my screen printing. I'm, I've come up with with a few designs, and you're particularly fond with one. And you're like, mm -hmm. I know this is going to sell. You know what I mean? Because it's like. I put so much time and effort, and I right. know what 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 the thought process is. But then you roll it out to the public, and it's like, you know, a turn, you know, <laughs> in, in, in the punch bowl, right? And it's like, all right, well, damn, may, maybe I'll just make one for myself. So, <laughs> but then you become your own billboard, yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. that that looks pretty cool because you can, you know, seeing it on a screen, and then seeing it in, in real life is, you know. Sometimes it's different, you know. Yeah, it's like okay, yeah, I well, can kind of see that, right? <laughs> yep. Now, aside from things of a physical nature, um, t-shirts and things of this nature, books, short stories, you know, Q. Obviously, with you, your talent is motivational speaking. So your talents are not going to be, like you're not going to wear your words. Right, right. Your, your talents are going to affect a different part of an individual. It is mind, body, and soul. Um, how, I mean, we just laid here, we, or we just sat here and laid out how you got to go through the trial and error, the time, mm -hmm. you know, how many times did Brian work on his logo before it was ready for, for the public? For us, um, you know, you specifically, but I mean, I go th through this too. Now that we are doing things like the Klaus and Q show, and we got the podcasts, so we're doing all all this all this other stuff. What kind of preparation? Well, I know there's pros and cons. There's 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 comparisons and contrast to mm -hmm. what we're doing versus what Brian's doing, right? Right, absolutely. One thing with uh, you know, in this, you know, I don't want to say profession, but uh this avenue you know this avenue pretty much you have to work on yourself before you try to work on somebody else i mean if i'm crooked and i'm all jacked up and i'm trying to encourage somebody else to walk a straight and narrow line then i'm just just a crooked guy just trying to make a straight line mm -hmm. but uh, it doesn't really work that way when uh it's because it's not going to come across as genuine so one thing that uh you got to do is you got to really work on yourself and that's one thing. And it's like that don't make us perfect. That don't make that don't mean that we're all we're not all there. You know, we, we got issues and we got stuff that we're trying to get over. Uh, you know, hurdles we're trying to jump and everything, just like the next person. But uh, just being genuine and and you know encouraging people. And it is not just words, because like once you're out there on social media, people are watching you. 
and they're they're watching how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. And just like, and I remember uh, you brought it up on the Klaus and Q show, the very, no, 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 the uh, Klaus of the Heart show, when I first appeared, you said what pretty much drew you to me was the way I carried myself. Right. So sometimes it's not always words, it's about how you carry yourself, because there's always gonna be a problem, but it's really how you respond to each and every problem that really matters. I, I totally agree, and it is that's it ties into what we've been talking about here is you know obviously how we present ourselves to the public but also you know how we present ourselves to ourselves because yeah. I've said it a thousand times the one person you are not going to you know to BS is yourself you got to get straight with the individual in the mirror right yeah, because yeah. if not there is your your level of success is going to be minimal at best right right if you ex if if you achieve any kind of success mm -hmm. right because and this is going to go into segment two and i'm <laughs> I, I, I uh i have a feeling <laughs> I, i'm walking i'm walking a fine line here right now oh man um <laughs> but but ego your your ego is your ego is going to be the one thing I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Brian. I think ego is the biggest killer. It is. It is either going to make mm -hmm. you or break you, right? Oh, yeah. So as as somebody, as a consumer, let's say, what is your biggest turnoff to a, to a company or an individual that's trying to sell a product or anything that they're bringing to the proverbial table? What's going to be that one thing that you're like, nope, I want no part of this? I don't, I, I see your question, but I, it's not so much like what I'm not, like I push away from, it's what draws me is being, I feel where I can feel related, like you can relate to something. Like that was when I, we were talking about Q with him doing the, uh, like his workout training and stuff like that. I'm like, you, you're a father, you work. I'm like, your relatability is there's so many people that don't have time. Right. to work out and stuff like that. But yet you find that time. So when they see that in you, that, that, that fires something up in them. So like even with merchandise and stuff like that, when I, there's something that I relate to there, or even it's the person making it. Like there's something, like we share like, it's like an 80s like retro theme. It's like, oh, that just fires up my childhood. Right. Like that's like instantly, instantly makes me go right there. It's like, I'm drawn to that. The relatability. Yep. I, yeah, I mean, you use the the '80s thing as as a reference. How many hours have we spent talking about everything pop culture in the '80s? Music, because it's movies. the best generation. Well, it really is. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you you know, all depending on the age. Obviously, there there will be arguments, but and they're wrong. And they would be. <laughs> they, you know, when you cut when you cut it down to black and white, it is. We we kind of rule, right? Like our, <laughs> our 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 childhood far exceeded everybody else's just because of what was presented. Because in that time, and this is you know, and I realize we're talking about talents, but you talk about the artists, you talk about the musicians, the actors, the actresses, the movies, the TV shows, everything that came out in that era. I find, and maybe I'm just biased here. But I find that there was a hell of a lot more soul and a, li a lot more personality into what was presented to us in any kind of entertainment realm. Whereas, I'll use music as an example. I, I, I have shied away from the music scene here today, by and large, because... You have bands that are raking in millions of dollars. They're going on tours. They're booking these huge stadiums for you know their concerts and whatnot. Um, they didn't write one of their songs. They did not. They do not play any of their own instruments. Everything yeah. is done on a computer. Digitally. And, I mean, and that's, including their voice. Well, right. Oh because, man. Auto tune and all that. Yeah, stuff. <laughs> it does not sound. Now there are exceptions to to the rule. I understand that. I mean, I use. I use the the Dave Matthews band as an example all the time. I know, I knew, I just did that for for you to chuckle. But um, I'm not a Dave Matthews band, but it just the, I, instantly as soon as you, I start singing "Satellite" in my head. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
but you but you look at a, like like Dave Matthews, like he is a guy that is so personally invested into what he presents under his his brand. He has established himself as this. They play their own music. They write their own songs. I mean, they do covers. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying all oh, it's all exclusive, but but his original music is his original music. Mm-hmm. You know, very rarely will you will you look at a song of his and it's written by so- somebody else. Right. All of his artwork on his albums and his, and his merchandise that's hand drawn by him. Not a lot of artists nowadays are doing <laughs> that, right? So he's mm-hmm. taken multiple facets of his talents and he, and has made a worldwide brand out of the whole thing. Um, that's what makes him stand out. Now, I, I'm, I've never really been into rap or hip hop or anything like this, and I guess you know I'm at a disadvantage here, but even rock bands nowadays, I can't tell you who's one over the other because they all sound the same. Oh man, yeah. So the individuality, yeah, and everything that goes goes into that, um, you know, that's going to make or break your levels of success, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So, um, what we're going to do right now, um, we are going to run a quick timeout, run a couple ads, and we will be back with more of the Klaus and Q show right after this. Runners and walkers of all ages are invited to come out to the 2022 Dragon Dash 5K on Sunday, May 15th. Check-in opens at 7.30 a.m. with the race starting promptly at 9 a.m. The Dragon Dash begins and ends at the Orient Center with participants heading out on the scenic Pollyann Trail toward Civic Center Park and back again. All participants will receive a medal as they cross the finish line. For more information, call 248-391-0304 or visit orionparks.com. And welcome back to the Klaus and Q Show live on ON TV. We're coming to you from the ON TV studio in Lake Orion, Michigan. We certainly appreciate you tuning in this 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 week, this month, really. Um, I'm Jason Klaus with Claude L. Edwards, and our very special guest and friend, Brian Balt, has joined us. And gentlemen, we've sat here for the last half hour or so talking about how important it is to utilize our talents, to recognize our talents in order to achieve our different levels of success. Um, now, the common theme here between the three of us, and this is a very popular topic of of conversation at our shoot jobs, our real life jobs, it would be professional wrestling. And um, Brian, you and I talked last night on the line and um, you you were kind of poking fun at us a little bit because last month here on the show, uh, Q and I did kind of our, our WrestleMania predictions and Brian was quick to point out everything that I had gotten wrong. So um, <laughs> let's talk about WrestleMania r- real quick. Um, obviously, for <clears throat> all intents and purposes, the Super Bowl of professional oh, wrestling. I can't say that. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> the big show, as it were. Um, Q, you watched it. Um, you know, two night thing. A lot of things went down. Mm-hmm. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up on the first night. Okay. I'm somewhere in the middle on that second night. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of, it was, it was kind of overkill, you know. It, was, it seemed like they kind of went into that formula that they usually go into, uh, kind of like phoning it in on that uh, second night. But that first night, filled with surprises, great matches. I mean, it blew me away on that first night, man. So let me ask you this real quick: Did they make the right call in having Austin and Owens cl- close the show out? I think they did. Yeah, yeah, I think they I, did. There, there was a lot of talk that it was going to be the Charlotte and Ronda Rousey match uh, that, that that was going to close it out. <laughs> yeah. A lot of controversy with the announcement just a couple days out from from Saturday night par- a, a portion of the show that that Steve Austin and Kevin Owens were going to close out night one. Obviously, night two was going to have the uni- the unification match between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Um, Brian, what what was your overall thought on on WrestleMania this year? Did did you like it? I liked it. Um, it was. 
I, I wasn't insanely enthused with it. It was, it was good. It was entertaining. Um, pre wrestle this WrestleMania, I probably would have been more on Q's side where you, Q was saying he likes the two day format, mm -hmm. and I know you push more towards the one day format. Mm -hmm. I, I think after watching it, I'm like, you know what? I'm ready to go back to one day. Say it was too much. <laughs> I, think they're, I think they're just trying to pull it out too much yeah. and have so much. I think if you just packed it into one day and made it that like spectacle yeah. that it once was, mm -hmm. I think it would be a lot better. I feel like they need to end the brand split. I think that's kind of what they're... Yeah, I don't know do if that's this. what they're doing, yeah. but they are definitely are pushing towards unifying everything. Yeah, it, you know, obviously there was... There was a lot of of speculation of what they were going to do with the world title. Now that Roman Reigns has both of them, were they just going to unify it and do the undisputed WWE title, right. which I would have been totally fine with? But they're calling it the undisputed Universal title, and, yeah. I, and I really it's not going to last. No, I kind of <laughs> feel like just get the Universal <laughs> thing out of here. It's okay. I, it's run its course. It, I understand. Let's move on from it. But now, you know, they're talking about unifying the tag team titles. And I, I, I've always maintained that if they were going to do the brand split, actually utilize the brand split, quit, and, you know, having one guy jump from both shows. Right. And yeah. put the weekly epics, episodic nature around the Intercontinental title for one show and the United States title for the other one because it is a travesty that those titles were not in more... Um, you know, on the card, you know, as far as the Intercontinental Championship is, is concerned, these are, were at one time very prestigious titles. You know, like yeah. these were the worker belts, right? right? So yep. I don't know. I'm kind of with it. Get rid of the brand split. I'm, I'm more, see, there goes the damn pen again. I almost went flying. <laughs> oh, man. Um, George, what, what George. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> um, but yeah, I've always, you know, I understood the first year that they did the two night thing, but it, you know, for me, it kind of waters down what is WrestleMania. I understand right. you want to try to get as much of the talent. On paper, on it's a great idea. You're like, you're getting more wrestling. Right. Yeah. Like you said even. Yeah. It's like this has got to be great. We're getting two days now, and it's the weekend, so it's perfect. Right. Yeah. What well, kind of messed it up, like, man? It messed it up. There's a lot of matches where I'm like, I, I fell asleep. I told yeah, you guys, I, I fell asleep. Right. And now I woke up and all of a sudden Roman Reigns sitting there holding the belt. I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to have to rewind this. <laughs> <laughs> but there was those matches in between. I was like, I just don't care. Yeah. yeah you know, you, when you really think about it, they had the NXT pay-per-view at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. <laughs> yeah. That, that should have been on one of the nights. Yeah. yeah. I totally right. agree. And I really feel like that's why... Uh, um, I really feel like that's why it needs to go back to one night because you don't need every roster or every wrestler on the roster on that show. Yeah, that's what made WrestleMania special back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like they had a roster of fifty, but only like twenty-five of the guys made the actual pay-per-view. Right. You want to throw them in a battle royal in a dark match or something just to give them a payday, or you know that's cool. But that's what made M Mania so special. Not just WrestleMania, but the pay-per-view concept all together, like when it was just the four of them, mm -hmm. that, I mean, it was a big damn deal, right? Yeah, yeah. Now they have them every three weeks, and it's like, okay. Premium live event. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first WrestleMania that you watched? Uh, well, we couldn't watch. I'm not saying live, like I'm saying even VHS. Oh, one. So you watched it right from the beginning yeah. as it came out? Yeah. See, I want to say I was probably like, it was probably like WrestleMania three or four. And I just remember being able to go to the video store and grabbing those cassettes off and going back. Yeah. I'm like, that was such an awesome thing. Oh, yeah, and the like, cassettes, yeah. Like, just, you're not going to have that. And like, you could definitely couldn't do that with two days. Right. Like, it definitely loses much. so much. Uh, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah. Um, Can you put eight, nine hours on a cassette? Well, in, in a double cassette, because I still have my my, my my WrestleMania 4 one. It was it was two cassettes, and you open it up, and this big pop up head of Hogan pops up. <laughs> it was it was really cool. I still have it, as a matter of fact. I have all my VHSs. I need to get them transferred over. Um, kind of switching gears, and I know you guys aren't real big baseball fans, and I understand that. But you know, we are doing this live on Friday night, and. 
I, the only reason why I mention this now is because this alert came over my phone just a minute ago that the Tigers game has been postponed tonight, which has a lot of fans in and around the Detroit area pretty upset because if you are a Detroit Tigers fan, you are obviously paying attention to, to Miguel Cabrera's uh, hunt for 3,000 hits. Um, that's not going to happen tonight, unfortunately. But for me, selfishly, <laughs> I, th this makes me extremely happy because, I mean, you'll notice I, I'm, I'm representing here tonight because I am a big, a big baseball fan, big, a big Tigers fan. Um, but uh, I actually have tickets to, to tomorrow night or, or, or to, uh, tomorrow you know, afternoon game. So uh, hopefully I'll get to experience a little bit of history. But uh, um, before I go into the last portion of, of segment two, uh, Q, do you, is there anything that you would like to add to the topic that we talked about to kind of put a bow on, on everything? Well... Hopefully, everyone out there is motivated to, to really uh, use your talents to make yourself better, make the people around you better, and I'm telling you, it takes so much pressure off of you when it comes to life, is to use your talents. You know, I just keep it simple. I totally agree, uh, Brian. N number one, I I really pre I, and I know Q does too. We really appreciate you being here tonight. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Like fun. Le like we said. You know this this night's gonna fly by. Oh, yeah. You know because you, you get three friends, legit friends that have a lot of the same interests, a lot of the same, you know, goals and passions. Because mm -hmm. each one of us, we, we are meant for more than what we're doing right now. I mean, what we're doing now is, you know, it pays the bills and it's cool and it's it's provided yeah. us a lot of opportunity that perhaps it's a step. We, it, a step indeed. Um, but we certainly appreciate you being here tonight, and of course the um, the door is always open for oh, you. I appreciate you guys asking I, anytime. So, um, is there anything that you would like to add in to kind of tie in that you know everything in terms of what we've talked about here tonight? Yeah, I, I, the one thing I would say is like it's a common thread between the three of us as well. We're all three big note takers, mm -hmm. and it, studies have shown if you write down your goals and dreams it's a 42% chance they're more likely to happen. Because you have documentation. It's not yep. just running around your head. It, it's something that you that you can see. Right? I think, I think like, just not even, like, journaling is a huge one for me, but, like, I think writing down stuff, like, it's so important yeah. to success. Yeah, you know, it just, it ties into the talents of people and like like we've sat here and talked about during the course of this show tonight is you know we have to embrace who and what we are mm -hmm. who and what we want to be and there there are going to be aspects of it that is going to be met with resistance now that can be that can be tied into real life that can be tied into not just our goals and our dreams in terms of what we would like to do and, you know, for a job, to bring money in, to, to make ends meet, that type of thing. But every aspect, if you are going to be a success in any aspect of your life, you've got to get real with yourself. Now, full disclosure, this next portion that I'm fixing to spend the next few few minutes talking about has nothing to do with the topic at hand. Um, however, I am I I I have run this by both of these guys because, well, to be perfectly honest with you, um, these two are two of my dearest friends, and I really appreciate what they bring to my life on a very fundamental level. What, I'm, what I mean by that is I have always maintained that as long as you have a strong su support system, there is nothing that you cannot do or achieve. That is with every aspect of life. And sometimes when you are embarking on something, you are going to run into you know, obstacles, roadblocks, and challenges. And for a lot of us, when we are met with these things, it's very easy to just throw our hands up in the air and say, I can't do it. It's too much. Mm -hmm. But how bad do you really want it? 
truth of the matter is, is over the course of a, a while now. I mean, it, it all depends on how far into the woods you want to go. I, I could I could trace it back to a year. Um, I have embarked on changes that have totally altered who and what I am, but in an effort to get to the best version of me. And I have always said, and if you've listened to my podcast, this is a reoccurring theme that you get one life to live, what will you do with it? Do you want to live your life based on what other people want, what they think you should do? I have done that for the longest time. And it has gotten to a point to where I came to the realization that this is not the road that I, that I need to be on. This is not the road I want to be on because at the end of the day, I was BSing myself that I was not who I wanted to be. But I was, you know, my existence was based on what other people wanted me to be. And I allowed that to happen for the better part of my life to the point to where I've just said enough is enough. Now, when you start to think about changes like this, there is going to be a whole lot of resistance. And anybody that meets any kind of resistance is going to question whether or not this is too much for them. This is where your support system is, is crucial. These two gentlemen next to me right now have been my support system, and that's why I feel comfortable enough with taking this last portion of the show and expressing myself and to address some rumors and innuendo. Because, as we all know, in this day and age, everybody has to know everything about, every, about everybody. And if, you don't, if they don't get enough information from you, they will spin their own narrative. They will create their own story. They may make it yeah. a little bit more, oh, yeah. a little more appealing, right? Because in this day and age, and unfortunately... Huh? And it always spins negative. Negative. Yeah. You ever notice that? I yep. was just going to yep. say that. It never goes positive. <laughs> Because apparently, you know, controversy creates cash, as our friend Eric Bischoff has said before. <laughs> um, but that is the truth. Easy. It, it, it's the truth because that's the society in which we live right now, as unfortunate as it is. Because people don't want to pay attention to the positives. They, they don't want people to, to be happy for whatever reason. Because... A level of drama, uh, apparently, in some people's mind is, you know, it's, it's some sort of attention. It's some sort of, like, the spotlight is on you. But is that the kind of spotlight that you want? Now, I realize I'm going off on kind of a tangent here, and I'm trying really hard to keep this rant within PG realm. But let me tell you <laughs> something. Um, anybody who knows me knows I get I can get pretty fired up, especially when I start going into full blown promo mode, which is what's fixing to happen right now. So, Joe, I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, is that there have been a lot of rumors and in, and innuendo about what's happening with me, just based on my presentation and what I have chosen to present to the public realm out of my morbid curiosity from time to time and out of fr frustration and others, I have kind of played around with this. I have kind of thrown teasers out there just to see who would bite, just to see where it would go because, again, I'm kind of weird like that. I like to, I like to know who I'm dealing with, not just you know, what's being in front of me, but what, what makes them tick. Now, anybody who knows me on any level, pro professional or personal, know that I am not the same individual that I have been a year ago or even six months ago. And there is a lot, there's a lot behind that. Now, I realize what I'm fixing to say is going to be very controversial. What I'm fixing to say is going to probably piss a lot of people off. And you know what? That's life. If, you, if, if I ruffle your, your feathers, I apologize. If you, if you choose not to have any kind of, of association with me based on what I'm going to tell you, then that is your prerogative and I respect that. But I also expect you to respect my wishes because at the end of the day, it's my life. At the end of the day, I make sure that my priorities are in order. My obligations are met. And obviously, priority one is as a father, I need to make sure that my kids are taken care of. That is never an issue. My kids are very well taken care of. Fact of the matter is, is I, as I have not been. Fact of the matter is, is I have been somebody that I am not who I was portraying on, in a public realm. 
I was telling people that in order to achieve your ultimate life, your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, to be the person that you truly want to be, you have to, you have to go through these changes. You have to go through the mud. You, you are going to encounter a lot of dark days. But the sunshine that shines at the end of the storm is brighter than any storm or, or more powerful than any, any storm that you will encounter if you keep your eyes on the prize. I have done that. Because over the course of the last however many months, people in, in a public realm have seen me go through these changes. Obviously, the first one, the big one, was the, the, the suspension of operations of the Michigan Wrestling or Organization. Essentially, I was closing the door on a 28-year journey that, that really told the world who I was. That was just one aspect of it. It got to a point to where, yes, that was my passion. Yes, I've spent the majority of my adult time trying to build that brand, trying to be somebody under that umbrella. I can, I can safely say that in 28 years, I gave that, that business, that industry, literally everything that I had to the point to where I had nothing left. That's how I've always embarked on anything that I've done that has meant anything to me. Now, along those lines, I have also allowed other you know, influences and people to dictate to me who I need to be, who I should be, and where I need to go in life. Now, here's the problem. That's not who I wanted to be. And I was only going at it on autopilot. You know what I mean? Like, the lights were on, but nobody was home. I was doing bare minimum. I was doing bare minimum based on my obligations and responsibilities, but I was really doing a, a, a disservice to, to myself because, like I said, I would come on to a public forum and I would say, in order for you to, get, to have this life that you want, you're going to have to make some changes. You are going to have to make changes. Well, how in the hell can I sit there every week and say, this is what you need to do if I'm not doing the same thing? And why? There is a number of reasons why. You're worried about hurting people. You're worried about being, being perceived as something that you don't want to be perceived at. But at the end of the day, if that's what has to happen for you to become who you are supposed to be, then literally, in the grand scheme of things, it's a drop in a bucket. Now, here's the thing. Yes, there are a lot of changes being made. For me, things that have been long overdue. For the longest time... I have been, a, overall, a very unhappy person. I have been, um, I have not been the individual that I wanted to be because I didn't have what I felt at the time as a strong su support system. I felt like I was being dictated. I felt like I was kind of the puppet, you know, at the, at, at the helm of a puppet master to the point to where I'm like, the hell with this because th this is no life. And I, and I can pinpoint everything back to April 20, or or April of 2020. And if you've listened to my podcast, you know exactly what, what I'm talking about, and I'm not going to go too far in, in the, into the woods there, but I can pinpoint it to that day. That's the day that everything changed in my life. Everything changed. The way I viewed the world changed. The way I, I viewed people in my life changed. The way I viewed myself was altered to the point to where enough was enough. I have made very... Hard decisions. Well, not really hard, but you know, hard in terms of I realized that it was not going to be received f favorably overall by those in and around my life. And I worried about that for, for the longest time until I, I came to the realization that this is my life. And if you cannot su support me and my actions and my decisions to be the best version of myself the way I see it, then I don't really need you in my life. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of cold. It's kind of harsh. I understand that. And I don't mean to, you know, bust your bubble or whatever. But at the end of the day, that's what it all boils down to. Because those people who really, who really care about me are going to support me one way or the other. It doesn't matter what I do. They may not, it may not, you know blow the wind up their skirt not necessarily, but they're not going to abandon me either because if they are important to me, they want me to be happy. That's the way I see it. These two guys right here, they, you know, if they had an issue, if they had anything to say, 
they expressed it because as an adults we could communicate instead of you know going on social media and just spewing a bunch of crap however fast your fingers type a real life conversation means all the difference in the world fact of the matter is is I made a lot of life altering choices one of which was walking away from my family was um, severing my marriage because it I didn't feel like that that, that was the course of action that I needed to, to be on for the best version of myself both as a man and, a, and as a father now I realize that you know a lot of people would be like, well, how do you you know correlate the two? If I'm not the best version of myself fundamentally as a person, there's no way in hell I'm going to be the best version as a dad, and that's what what my kids need and deserve. And I realize that a lot of things can can be you know construed as being selfish. I understand that, but I'm tired of living my life for and by other people. The fact of the matter is, 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 subsequently, I have fallen in love with another woman named Brittany, and we have we have we have started this amazing re, re, uh, relationship, and it has totally changed my whole life. I am a lot happier person now. The sun shines a little bit brighter now. The grass is greener. The sky is bluer, and even in the days when when there are storm clouds, they're not insurmountable. I don't care how hard the wind blows; you're not going to knock me down. Why? because I have an umbrella in terms of, I finally have somebody that, that supports me and, and cares about me and loves me the way that I have wanted for an entire lifetime. That's not to talk disparaging about the previous life that I'm leaving behind because by and large, it, it was as, it is what, what it is, it's not like it was any chance of, of, of abuse or anything like that. The fact of the matter is, it's just my, my heart was not in it. And if your heart is not in it, you're only doing so much. Now, as I sit here and squash the rumors and, and innuendo, I realize that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be watching this for, for the very last time. And Q, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but at, at the same time, I felt like I cannot, I cannot be here to um, to to BS you, and I needed to be upfront. So, with any questions, comments, or feedback, you are encouraged to send us a DM to the Klaus and Q Show on Facebook. Anything else you you want to add, real quick? Yeah, um, <laughs> what we what you just witnessed was pretty much a butcher cutting the fat off the meat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you, we just witnessed Brock Lesnar cutting some, cutting some meat. But uh, some things have, some things got to happen. And uh, one thing that uh, I just want to say is, you don't, nobody deserves an explanation of what's going on with Jason. Because it's his life. And he's the one that's got to live it. The shoes that he's walking in, that's the shoes that he has to walk in. So nobody really has the right to have that explanation. So I'll just leave it at that. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate everybody tune, tuning in tonight. And um, I appreciate everybody. And we will be back here on ON TV on Friday night, uh, May the 20th, for the next installment. So be awesome to yourselves and to each other. We'll see you on May the 20th right here on the Klaus and Q Show on ON TV.